What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and for those of you guys who are new, I go by Locks by Lauren on Instagram. In this week's episode, I'm going to be showing you how I created this chunky underlights on my client. I really love this trend because there's so many ways to recreate this look and depending on the way that you style it, gives a different vibe. So let's get into it. So this is my client's before. She's got super long, thick hair, and she has some previously colored ends there that we're gonna be chopping off and cutting shorter. But her hair naturally is about a level two or three, and we're gonna be lightening just the underneath, and this was her goal. She wanted to be as like white and silvery as possible, but I did express to her that this might not be possible or if it is, it might take a couple sessions just depending on the health of her hair and how much her hair can really take. So here you can see I've already started my sectioning and I've already trimmed her hair so we don't waste any product, but we're going to be lightening that hole underneath there to make it super solid. She wants to see a lot of color on the on, underneath, so I went and opted to do away from the root. She wanted something low maintenance, so I didn't want to go to the root because um, it didn't really matter too much. She wasn't going to come back for a touch up so soon to touch up the root so I was just focusing on the mids and ends I felt like that would be more cost and time efficient for this process in case I needed to relighten her as a whole but I went ahead and took slices all the way back up and did back-to-back -back foils I did fold the foils up as well um, so that they kind of kept tight and didn't move too much because her hair is long and dense and I didn't want the foils to be slipping and for her lightener formula, I went ahead and used the Pulprite Blonde AF and I just used straight 20 with this. I mixed it about 1 to 2 ratio to make it a thick consistency so my foils didn't slip. And for her lightening process, I opted to start in the back just in case some foils were ready, I would be able to wash them out first in the bowl. And then once I was done foiling her, this is what it looked like. I made sure to put a towel around her neck so that in case any foil started slipping, it didn't get onto her skin and irritate her skin. So while my client was processing, I did put her under a little bit of heat just to speed up the process just a little bit, but I put it on medium heat only because the salon where I work at is very cold. We like blast the AC and I didn't want her foils to process any slower. So I just kind of put the setting to kind of mimic her body heat so that there was even distribution throughout all of the foils. And so I started to take out some of the foils that were ready in the back already here. And you can see I lifted her to about a level nine and 10. And before I rinsed her, I made sure to kind of smush all the ends together to make sure everything was even and let it lift just a little bit longer before I rinsed everything out this is also really great to see if you need to add and relighten any sections because I did fold the foil you might see that some pieces there might be little spots here and there that need a little bit of lightening and um, this is the best time to do it before you put the toner on so after I took out all of the foils I just kind of let this sit and process for a little bit longer until everything was pretty much even and all the same level So for her shadow root, I'm going to be using Faction 8 6-1, and this is honestly one of my favorite shadow root formulas. I love it, and even though this is a permanent hair color line, you can dilute it with developer to make it more of a demi for toning. So it's really great consistency and is easy to blend and has really good cover. The shadow roots are never spotty when using this product and applying it right, so I really love it for that. And for her silver formula, I'm going to be using the Rapid Toners. I'm using Icy from the Rapid Toner line, and I'm going to be mixing that up with some silver. And honestly, I feel like 
these are such great silver toners i feel like i see is a little bit more of a lighter silvery color and then the silver toner can go a little bit more on the grayer side and have a little bit more pigment so i love that you can really intermix them and change their mixing ratio with the developer to have full control of how light or dark it is because they do process quite quickly so Honestly, you are the artist and you can mix them however way you like. There are no rules to create the perfect silver that you want. So to start off the toning process, I brought my client back to my chair and notice how I kept the top of her hair clipped up. I left that clipped up so it would be easy for me to tone her so I only washed out the bottom when I took out her foils so that it would be easy to tone and then once I'm done toning her, I will be washing her whole head. It just makes it a little bit quicker so I don't have to resection. So I'm now applying the Shadow Root, the 6-1 from the Faction 8 line. Another reason why I wanted to use Factiony as my root shade is because it is a permanent hair color line, so it has really good coverage when using it as a root shade. I never have to worry of it being translucent. I feel like it does a really good job um, blurring out harsh lines like these, and I never have to worry of it fading all weird or anything. It does blend very well, as you'll see later as I apply the lighter color. And then the reason why I chose to use a level 6 for her shadow root was one because her natural is pretty dark so I wanted a medium between the lighter color and her natural and two because I wanted it to fade nicely. I was imagining that when she goes home and washes her hair her shadow root will probably fade about one to two levels so I wanted it to be dark enough so that when it fades those warm spots are still covered and her hair still looks good and nicely blended. So here I'm applying the lighter silver color on the mids and ends and when applying the rapid toners I will take about an inch section and apply the product side to side making sure that I'm spreading the hair and saturating the hair fully. Even though the hair is wet I want to make sure that I'm really saturating and getting everything in there and making sure that everything gets colored. Also, when applying the rapid toners, it's really helpful to apply the product quite quickly and then go back and recheck if you miss any spots because these toners do work fast depending on how you mix them and the mixing ratio. I usually mix them one to one or one to two, so they do work pretty fast for me, but if you're a slow toner, you can definitely dilute it and have it process a little bit slower. So let's talk about maintenance really quick. I always tell my clients if they want to maintain this like super light silvery color at home, it's best to get a purple shampoo. And the purple shampoo that I always recommend my clients to get is the Pop Right Barcelona shampoo because that stuff is super pigmented. And if you leave it on long enough and your hair is light enough, it will make it purple. But that's the beauty of it because you can always leave it on less or longer depending on what color you're going for. And especially with my clients who pull a lot of warmth, it's really great because of how much pigment it has and it's non-drying. So I feel like compared to a lot of other purple shampoos, it's not as drying. And then when you're not using purple shampoo, I would recommend my clients to get a sulfate-free shampoo to help lock the color in and keep it from fading and getting too yellow too quickly. But back to toning here, you can see the rapid toner really working there. It's canceling out a lot of the brass quite quickly and it's coming along turning into a really nice silvery color and here i'm just kind of going back and cross-checking making sure that i'm fully saturating didn't miss any spots and just making sure that everything is pretty much even once i'm done with that process i kind of let this sit for about seven to ten minutes but i do check on it every few minutes to make sure that everything is looking good and not getting too dark and then a really great tip whenever toning the hair is to pinch test the hair. Um, this way you can see how light and well the toner has taken on the hair before rinsing it out too soon or too late. 
Alrighty, and here is my client's after. You can see with her hair down, the color has slight peekaboo effects throughout and is super light and ashy against her dark hair. What I really love about this color placement is that she's able to get so many different looks with this hair color, whether she parts her hair to the side or puts it up in different styles, she exposes different parts of the color and gives her a totally different vibe. So she can wear her hair down and just have slight peekaboos or she can put her hair up and show a lot of the color and give more of that edgy 90s chunky vibe. And in case you're wondering, I styled her with some Copenhagen, the leave-in conditioner from Pope Riot, and then I also added some Munich, their hair serum for heat protectant, and I styled her with a 1 and 1 fourth inch clamp barrel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and tuning into this week's episode, and I can't wait to talk to you guys next week.